Hello everyone. Um, this demo would be based on Shopify and Microsoft Dynamics Navigation. So we have a Shopify demo store which is connected with Nav Demo Database Company using Apps eConnect, and there are a couple of synchronization features that we have developed for this demo. So those integration points would be starting from customers, customer sync, and then the items and update the stock for this for that item then we can create the orders and fulfill the order status so the order fulfillment cycle is there so the entire sales cycle we can covering in this particular demo now AppSeconnect is a hybrid platform and um, the architecture supports the entire applications whether it's related to e-commerce ERP marketplaces flat, flat files it's a generic platform and it has got two important components one is cloud portal and another is AppC Connect agent cloud portal is something through which you can entirely configure the business logic and um, you can perform the field mappings or value mappings and agent is something through which which is a very lightweight software component which helps to trigger the entire data now coming back to Shopify or the demo the first uh, process which uh, right now I'm going to showcase is uh, creating a new item creating a new customer so to create a new customer I'll quickly going into my Shopify front-end store and I'll provide the contact details of that customer so that would be the um, contact details I'll provide over here and this customer synchronization is a bi-directional synchronization process like customers can be synced from Shopify to nav and at the same time if any kind of extra existing customer details are there on nav those things can be adjusted from nav to Shopify as well so once I provide the address for this particular customer I'll quickly save it now if you, I'm going into my AppSeq Connect agent what I was talking about this agent is a very lightweight software component and it helps to trigger the data so here I find out this customer add option and this customer add helps you to trigger the customers from Shopify to nav and like we can completely support the registered customers and guest customers as well against a default customer code so once this customer synchronization has been done I'll quickly open the customer and I'll quickly find out with the customer name to see that particular customer detail has been present or not so here you can find out that particular customer detail is there and if I just expand that particular information there would be the contact details and the address details and apart from that we are going to use our AppSeq Connect extension because uh, as the structure of ERP e-commerce is completely different and there are few requirements to adjust the fields to add any additional field additional UDF so instead of maintaining that in nav UDF we are going to use AppSeq Connect extension or granules which is completely certified by Microsoft and those extension helps you to add few pages few tables and under that pages tables web services code units you are able to add our AppSeq Connect fields and using that AppSeq Connect field you can trigger the data so let's say here the customer page if any kind of customer groups you are going to maintain on Shopify if you are uh, you having uh, more multiple websites on Shopify those things can be managed using this extension the web customer flag helps you to eliminate or uh, differentiate between like probably probably the online and offline customers so these are um, few of the fields that we are going to maintain using the AppSeq Connect customer page and application customer list. This is completely done by AppSeq Connect extension. Now if any kind of additional fields they want to map in between Shopify and Nav, those things can be done. So um, this customer sync is a bi-directional synchronization process. If those customers needs to get sync from Nav to Shopify, that can also be done. Now the next process which is item product so I'm going to create the item uh, from nav because uh, I uh, 
think that to list the items would be the best practice from ERP side. So therefore I am quickly opening um, the item detail, item card and here you can provide the item code. Let's say that's the item code I am providing. You can mention the item description or the name of the item. So let's say that's the item name I am here mentioning and then you can uh, like maintain that whether it is in pieces or not. So let's say it's in pieces and there are some required details like the general posting group. So these are the mandatory or required fields from nav site. So therefore I'm going to mention mm, those details from Navision end and tax group code. So once I'm done since I want to assign or list the variants as well along with the item because an item can have multiple variants a t-shirt can have multiple colors multiple attributes so for that I'm going into the variant section and I'll quickly assign the variant based on the code so let's say here red and next code let's say here is yellow now if I assign the variance, I need to assign the cross references as well. So based on that, I need to select the barcode, cross reference number can be any. And then you have to select the variant code from here. Variant code and along with that, the proper description. So once I'm done, I can assign the next variant here along with the cross reference number and barcode. So here I need to assign the variant code and the description. So once I completely save the variants from there, so that's the process through which you can maintain the attributes, you can maintain the color, you can maintain the sizes or any kind of specific variants that you want to assign for your product. Now using our AppC Connect extension, there would be few other tables added like um, the product details or you can say the product websites and so many extra tables or pages have been added through which you can maintain multiple additional information for your item. So let's say if you have multiple attributes, if you have uh, multiple you know websites, if you have multiple categories, those things can be manageable using AppC Connect website. And this three flags enable visible and uh, web item flag. Web item flag is something through which you you provide the signal to our connector that those items should be synced and that's the checkbox through which you can differentiate between active and inactive items and enable visible is something that those items should be listed on Shopify and those items should be enabled on your Shopify store now once I created the variant so there would be multiple segments of the item it can be a simple item it can be a configurable or rather the term is items with their variants and so many options are there because um, it's uh, based on the Magento concept so if I select the variants I need to change the web product type as configurable and once I change it you can find out under the product child option those details are already there and now for the application ID, so this Navision has been connected to multiple other e-commerce platform. So we need to know that with which particular e-commerce platform we are going to add this um, particular item. So that's the application ID, um, one for Magento, two for Shopify and three for WooCommerce and so on. So that we can differentiate between those platforms that this item has been associated or associate under the Shopify store. So um, in this way we can differentiate and we can check the item flag as well. Now coming back to the prices of that variance. So to do that, if I quickly save it and if I open that particular item from there and I can go into the sales price option. So there would be the sales type options um, available if you want to provide the price for the customer, customer price group, all customers, these things can be done. Now against all customers, if I want to assign the variant code and the unit price, let's say $120 for this variant and then again I'm going to choose the another variant with another unit price so if I quickly save this item price and if I open that particular item against um, that product child option or the variance option I can find out the price has been updated so if I quickly scroll down you can find out the variant price has been updated for it.
now um, the option to synchronize from NAV to Shopify is um, product at width variance so here manually or automatically based on your requirement you can synchronize it and the item details will be exchanged in your Shopify store now this item for the item images uh, image can be synced from NAV uh, having a specific naming convention but again for the image purpose that we always recommend to our customers it should be directly maintained from the e-commerce website not to sync from ERP to e-commerce because if we sync it will kill the bandwidth and at the same time on the ERP side there is no option to store HD images so therefore and also uh, you need to know that under which naming convention against a which uh, specific folder uh, you uh, store your item images uh, but again that uh, it can be done by Apsi Connect but that's not the standard practice and that can kill your bandwidth and uh, you are not able to have the proper quality HD images back to your Shopify store so therefore the best practice is when you have the images you directly maintain it from your e-commerce website it will be more lightweight for you to understand now once this would be done if I going into the product section I can find out with the item name that um, whether uh, this has been synced or not so if I find out with the proper item name and if I open that particular item I'm just cr quickly scroll down there would be the description the variance section you can find out the variance and you can find out the all the information that I mentioned any kind of extra fields you want to add those can be added in our AppSync Connect extension by our team and based on the requirement those things can be done okay now the next process is we are going to add the inventory okay and to synchronize inventory I have um, one integration point present for it and that is inventory update but before that I need to adjust the stock for this particular item with their variance I need to update the stock for it and for that I'm going into the item journal section and uh, here I'm going to mention the item number against which I want to allocate the inventory so let's say that's the item you can adjust the stock for the item and um, now I'm going to select the location code and now I need to select the variant for which variant I want to allocate my stock let's say the first one and if I provide the inventory for it let's say 800 and now I want to associate the second item variance as well so for that I need to select the item first that's the item and if I going into the you know variant section I am going to select the second variant this one and for this particular variant I need to assign the quantity let's say 600 so this has been done now what I need to do I need to post the inventory for it so I'm going to post the inventory and this journal lines has been have been successfully posted so this has been done and now if I open this apps eConnect agent there would be one integration point and that is inventory update so in this inventory update you can find out all the update or modification has been done so instead of doing this manually you can do this on automatic trigger as well mm, so uh, for automatic trigger there would be a background process running that after how many interval you would like to synchronize the data after every one minute or two minutes or five minutes then it will automatically get synced so now um, like um, for the you know item for the inventory and for the customer when the customer has a presence on both the platforms similarly when the item has a presence on both the platforms and the item variance have got their proper inventory like um, the stock then you can able to you know synchronize the orders so um, for inventory we can take the inventory from the cumulative warehouse and based on the warehouse we can map the particular quantity so um, now this inventory update has been completed 
I need to going into my you know mm, this particular item and I need to refresh the page to see that whether the inventory has been updated or not so you can find out that the inventory has been updated with the proper quantity that I mentioned on my navigation uh, section now coming back to the order so to place an order I can take the item name and I can search with the proper item name and then I can select one variant and I can submit the item for it so if I select the item variant let's say red and I quickly click this item to cart so there would be the checkout option and the tax and freight code or the shipping charges can be properly mapped in between your two platforms those things can be manageable by AppC Connect whatever freight code um, shipping method you are going to select those things can only be mapped similar for payment method as well we are completely uh, supporting the you know uh, online offline payment method both but for this demo I'm going to use a dummy payment method um, but it is completely flexible to synchronize online and offline payment method both now if I just quickly complete the order I got my order ID so okay mm, so now just uh, for the uh, like you know I'm just quickly going to provide the dummy payment method and here the you know expiry date and any three digit number so now the order has been placed and it has been processed from my e-commerce website I need to going into the nav side and I need to select the you know order process order add which can add the order so for order 2 there would be the process for manual or automatic trigger so either you can do this on manually or you can do this automatically based on your requirement now this thing has been done I'm quickly going into my sales order I quickly open that particular order and here you can find out with the customer name so you can find out that order has been converted to sales order and if I open that particular order there would be the customer information there would be the item line item information for the variant and any kind of extra details if you want to map those things can be done also there would be the order header details and order line details these details are there as I already mentioned there would be a flag for AppC Connect to remove the duplicate orders or you know any kind of logic based on the requirement we need to put or we need to assign over here those things can be done now I need to post a shipment I need to complete the delivery for it and so for that I'm going to create a posted de sh shipment or delivery document if along with that you want to uh, see the posted documents you can going into the posted document section you can select the shipments which you right now um, you know selected so if I create the customer name you can find out that this customer shipment has been posted successfully now from nav to Shopify there would be a fulfillment ad process which generally completes the delivery for it so um, in this way if you create the invoice too and if you uh, give the tracking ID of that particular uh, order uh, for to track the delivery those things um, can be done and here from the recent panel you can find out the status of that particular delivery and to check that you can going into the front end store of Shopify go to that particular account you can see that the fulfillment status is fulfilled similar with payment status too if you complete the invoice the status would be changed from changed into paid so that's the basic cycle we are covering in case of Shopify and now for more information you can directly contact with us thank you